guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Sonnet, the owner and creator behind Sonnet's Garden Blooms. And in today's video, I am taking items from my recent thrift haul and we are going to be flipping them into beautiful treasures. So stick around and see what I do with five items that I recently picked. If you watched Friday's thrift haul video, you will know that I grabbed this bag of clothespins at the Goodwill bins. I have this habit of just grabbing things that I find very cool and tossing them in my cart. And then my cart gets so full, I forget what's in there and I don't want to take it all apart to rummage through. So I end up buying it all. So I did grab these. I love them. I love all things vintage and old. And these were really cool. I know that you can still get wooden clothespins like the clippy kind, but these are, I remember my mom having these when I was very little. So what I did here is I decided I was breaking them into groups of nine and I ended up getting four different piles. I ended up pulling out the other wood clothespins that were in there as well. But eventually what I want to do is group them and clump them together with some twine or rope of some sort. But we're going to hand stamp these today. So let's go ahead and get started. Now that I have my four piles, I am using the set called Letterpress from IOD. And all the products that I'm using in today's video, you can order off my website. So I do carry all the DIY paint, all the IOD stamps, transfers, all that good stuff. And I also carry all the recycled papers. So I am starting off, I want to show you, this is a thin mount and I love this because I take one and basically I cut it up into all different sizes that way when I am creating either uh, different scenes or using different stamps I can use it on all the different size thin mount now the set that we're using today called letter press this is one of my favorites because you do get three different fonts uh, they are different sizes so I am using the bottom font it worked perfectly those numbers fit right on the clothespins and my vision here is I thought it'd be kind of fun to stamp them one to nine so I started with the number one and by far it was easy to stamp on the these little square ones they're still vintage but they the the round ones are really I think old so I stamped on that one first it came out perfect I started trying to stamp on the round ones and then I realized I better get something underneath it so I grabbed an old towel and I folded it up and created just a little tiny nook where I can lay that clothespin right in there. I ink up my number and basically I just lay it down on the uh, clothespin and then just rub and rock them back and forth a little bit just to make sure you get full coverage uh, of your stamp on the clothespin. And this goes by really quick and easy. And I did that one through nine. And then after that, we're going to take them and we are going to clump these together, like uh, put some twine around there and uh, group them together. And then I'm going to put them in my booth uh, for sale. I just think it'd be kind of fun for someone if they are hanging something that they can have them numbered uh, or even just numbered in a little clump uh, as a shelf sitter. So today I did showcase these uh, clothespins on my Facebook page and I asked, you know, have any of you decorated or used these in home decor? And boy, I got a ton of ideas. So as I was doing this, I'm, they were just popping in. I knew last night what I had planned on doing with these and uh, I love the idea of carrots. I think actually... I made those last year. I just did a set of three and showcased it. Uh, so there's just so many good ideas. Next, I grabbed this out of my stash. I actually had thrifted like four rolls of this and it reminds me of yarn, but it's like really, it's like Chanel. And I thought that would be kind of cool. And I started using it and it kind of pulled apart. So this was my first vision and I quickly kiboshed that. 
the next thing I wanted to mention too, as I was picking them up, I noticed that a few were a little wet yet. I did take my heat gun and I did heat set them uh, just to make sure that they were completely dry. I did use the IOD permanent ink and once it's dry, it is permanent. It is not coming off, uh, but I wanted to just tell you that that's what I would recommend doing. Here's a close-up of the clothespins, and oh, I just love how these turned out. I think they look so cute, and I like both of them. Even the round ones and the little tiny square ones, they turned out so cute. So here I've um, taken th two little bundles, and I've wrapped them with twine, and you guys, I just love them. For our next project, I grabbed these at the bins also last week, and I'm sure some of you will probably think I'm crazy for doing what I'm going to do to these, but I did think that they were pretty, but there was some damage done to both of the pictures, and I decided I was going to kibosh the scenes and start off by painting both of them with two coats of DIY's White Swan. And I am going to break out two different uh, Roy Cycle decoupage papers and we're going to use them on these pictures. And I have been wanting to do this for a while and this will be the perfect opportunity. The frames are in really good shape. I do have to take a little bit of the dark and decrepit liquid patina and just uh, kind of touch up some of the scratches on the frames but overall they're very sturdy so uh, like I said I'm applying two coats of the white swan to both of these let them dry very thoroughly and then we're going to come back and I am going to show you what papers I chose today to uh, upcycle these two pictures the first paper I chose was Bird Ephemera. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that correct or not, but I love this one because of the little bird's nest with the little eggs, and this is just shouting, screaming spring. And if you guys have been following along, you know that here in Wisconsin, it has been snowing nonstop. Uh, we have gotten so much snow in this last few days. I honestly am wondering if spring is really around the corner. Uh, but for starters, what I did here is I laid the paper down. I left just a slight overhang on the top and on one of the sides. And then I took my finger and I just kind of marked where exactly I wanted the paper uh, to go or to fit in. I did then cut off all the excess paper just to make it a little bit easier to work with. Next, I am going to do my starter strip. This is the easiest way that I have found to uh, apply decoupage paper. So I love using liquid patina from DIY to use with the recycled paper. And I just apply a really nice even layer to start this off. So once I apply it, I then lay down the decoupage paper and I smooth it out and then I lay down another chunk of the liquid patina and I work in sections all the way down and this really helps prevent any tearing, a lot of the wrinkles, uh, it just it's very easy to manage and work with. Next, we're using Spring Bird, and uh, again, I am feeling spring, guys. So I'm going to do the exact same thing. I am laying it down. I'm going to fit it in the frame, cut off the excess, but this one too, oh my gosh, it's just so pretty with the birds, uh, the flowers. I love the berries on the tree and then the writing. It just all looks so cool, and I cannot wait to use this paper. So after I did the decoupaging on both of the frames, 
and it dried. I went in with an X-Acto knife and basically exactoed all four of the edges and then that really made a nice crisp clean image so after that then i went in with that dark and decrepit liquid patina and this is a patina that you can use on projects i love touching items up with it like this uh, the patina is a very similar colored as the frame so i just went in and i added a little bit here and there wherever there was a little scratch um, or you know some of the the coloring had come off and it blended perfect and the frames looked brand new Here's another item that I grabbed at the Goodwill bins. Anytime I find little containers like this that are super cute, I grab them right away so I can flip them and transform them into something beautiful. Now, I have been watching a ton of Debbie Beard's videos and how she is blending uh, DIY colors. I did do that on a buffet that I've used for myself and I've been wanting to try it on a big piece of furniture again, but I thought, well, today's a great time to try to blend some different colors and something that is a lot smaller and easier to manage. So for starters, I'm going in with Mint Chip from DIY and I am applying two uh, even coats of Mint Chip to the piece. So after it's completely dry, I have all sides painted, uh, the edges around the inside. I am taking my misting bottle and now I'm going in with Farm Fresh and I am going to try to blend Farm Fresh in with the mint chip. Now I'm like, okay, I probably should have watched the video before I started doing this. And I just, I winged it, but I really am loving how this is turning out. So one thing I would recommend doing um, is make sure that your piece is a little bit more uh, wet before you start applying that second layer. But that's what I did is I just kept on misting, applying um, a little bit more paint, blending the two colors together. And then after I got done or I liked the way it looked, I did let it dry again. And then I went in with a third color. So here it's completely dry. I decided to go in with Bohemian Blue and add some of that. Now, Bohemian Blue is very pigmented and um, at first this is not the vision I was going for, but I embraced what was happening here and I just kept on blending and adding a little bit more water and uh, basically it was the the water is key and to have a really good misting bottle like I have and then I just kept on blending it more and more and as it was coming together I'm like this reminds me of an old worn pair of jeans and I just kept on spraying and adding more water to dilute some of that uh, bohemian blue I liked how the paint kind of like there was a little bit of some runs it just looked old and vintage and in the end i think this turned out amazing i love it and i actually kind of want to keep it for myself 
So here it is completely dry and you can see that there's some like runs a little bit and some of that mint chip is coming through and I it it's dry here but our next step is we are going to completely seal it and I am using Big Top to do that so I'm going to apply one even coat of Big Top, seal the entire piece, and then we're gonna come back and I wanna embellish this just a little bit. So the piece is completely dry. I broke out painterly florals. So on a project that I used this last fall, I used a lot of the sunflowers and there were quite a few roses left over. I decided to add a couple of the roses to the top just to finish this piece off and I really think it just ties it all together and I love it. If you haven't used any of the transfers yet, they are super simple. Basically, uh, this set has um, all different florals. It has stems, uh, leaves, and so I thought I would start with some leaves. I put the leaves on in the corner, and then I layered a couple of the rose buds. From there, I added one additional leaf off, and I think it was just the perfect touch to the entire piece. Basically though, you figure out what you, where you want to place your transfers, pull off the backing, lay the transfer down. Each uh, transfer comes with a little stick. You just rub that over and that transfer comes right off that backing. And at the end, then take that backing once you get it down and rub it all over. And that's called burnishing. It really Im like embeds that transfer in your piece. And then from there, uh, you're going to want to seal it once you're completely done. You guys know how much I love my rolling pins and in my last thrift haul when I found this in one of the bins I could not pass it up. So for starters here what I'm going to do is apply two even coats of white swan to the base of this rolling pin. I am then going to go in with a wet or damp rig and I'm going to do some wet distressing just to bring back um, some of that wood grain and make it look old and aged and uh, then we're going to seal it with Big Top and I just apply one even coat of Big Top to the entire piece. We're going to let it dry very thoroughly and then I'm going to show you what we're going to do to this. From the spring release of IOD, I love this transfer. It's called Millet's Pages, and I have been trying to figure out different ideas on how to use this transfer. So I thought this was a perfect opportunity to apply some of these transfers to this rolling pin. And at first I'm like, what? now which ones do I want on here? And in the end, I decided to go with all things that were uh, carrot related or potato related, like basically everything on the top half of this page. And the fun thing about these transfers is you can cut them apart. You do not need to just lay this whole piece of like transfer page down and use it all at one. You can use it for all different projects. So that is exactly what we're going to do here is I'm basically going to start cutting it apart and deciding what I want on here and where. So from there, what I'm going to do is just peel off that backing. Uh, I'm going to make sure that I get it almost centerized and then 
wrap it around and then we're going to start with that transfer stick and basically just start rubbing and making sure that we get it really adhered down and then start by peeling that backer piece off and really it is as simple as that and if you notice up in the upper right hand corner i do have some leftovers and there is going to be a little space in between the top and the bottom here and then we're going to just fit those in there to make it look like it was all meant to be so here is that little piece that i was talking about and we are going to cut it apart and make it fit that entire piece in between the top and the bottom and i love how this turned out it is so unique and there are so many possibilities with this transfer and what you can use it for after that i'm going in with big top and i am going to completely seal this and let it dry very thoroughly and then i decided we are going to do something with the handles because i've been completely obsessed with gypsy green i'm going in and i am applying one even coat to each of the handles i'm going to let it dry very thoroughly and then i'm coming back with a damp rag i'm going to wet distress each of the handles really just give it that look like the handles have been used a million times i will seal it with big top anytime you're using diy paint if you do not seal it you can reactivate it with water and that's exactly what i showed you with that previous video where you can blend the different colors uh, yes, with DIY paint, by misting it, it can be reactivated. So you do want to seal it after you're done um, and ready to use. I grabbed these two little uh, silver containers at the bins as well. Now, this one is in really good condition. The handle is on there perfectly. Unfortunately, the other one is not as in great of condition. So the guy who had these in his cart, he did, one of the handles must have been on, the other one was off, and he knocked one of the handles off. So on each of the sides, there are these little marks, and I have come up with a solution to fix that. So I am going to use a mold to hide those. And I was trying to figure out out of the trimmings molds, which one would look the best with this. And finally I settled on um, one of them that had little flowers in it because the feet actually had little flowers. So to start off, I did use cornstarch and I put cornstarch in there just to make sure that the clay popped out very easily. I do use the IOD um, air dry clay. I put a little chunk in there and I, it, this is the easiest clay to work with guys. And it comes, um, it's so easy to have like a really nice smooth back with the micro rim edges make sure that I really get it in there. And then I use gravity, tip it over, and it pops right out. Now I am going to create two of these, one for each side. And I think it really um, helped hide that imperfection and just added a little something to that container. Now that I have both of them uh, already molded and ready. I am using Tight Bond. Uh, it is called Tight Bond Quick and Thick. And I just squirt, squirt a little tiny bit on there, use my finger to evenly rub it. And I want to get it all the way to the edges, but you don't want too much because when you do apply it, you do not want excess uh, of the glue to come out. 
After I get it on, I try to make sure that I get a very good adhesion, but I do not want to put a lot of pressure on there that it distorts the image. I also go around uh, the around the whole perimeter and just make sure that it's completely adhered. The key with the air dry clay is you do want it to be dry. So I do like to have everything dry overnight. That way, um, when you do paint it, you're not, you know, when you're putting the paintbrush on there and getting into all the, the details of these amazing images, you're not distorting the image. So by letting it dry overnight, um, that way when you paint it, you add wax or whatever you're going to do to it, you still um, get, you know, the integrity of that beautiful image will not be hurt. So here I'm going in with White Swan. I'm going to paint both of the containers with two coats of White Swan. After they are completely painted and dried, I am going in with that damp rig and I want to bring out all that beautiful detail on the feet and the handle. And so I am just rubbing here and there and bringing out all that beautiful detail. Then I'm going to let it dry and then I'm going to seal it with Big Top and this project is complete. What did you guys think? I had so much fun flipping those items today. And you guys, it's been a long time since I've been back at the bins. I am going to, because I have gone through a lot of my stash, you know, the items that were in here, I am also uh, still tackling my greenhouse, but I am getting ready now for antique acres. So I am going to make sure that on a weekly basis that I am going out and picking. So I'll definitely be bringing you guys along for that. But then I want to bring you along with what I'm doing to the items. Some of them I am obviously just cleaning them up and putting them right in um, the, my little area for antique acres. And some of them I actually have to flip or I have a vision for those. And again, I am going to be bringing them to Antique Acres as well. So that is May 19th and 20th. And I will also put the information uh, in the description below so that if you do want more information about it, it's down in the description. Otherwise, over on my Facebook page, I also have information over there. I created a post about it. Um, it is one of my biggest events that I do every year and it is a ton of fun and let me tell you the vendors that are there go big and they bring lots of amazing things um we have days to set up for it so i hope that i get to see a lot of you guys there as well last year i had quite a few viewers come and visit me so i hope to see you this year as well now for Friday's video, I'm not sure yet, but I do have more items from my recent thrift haul that I want to flip. And so you're probably gonna be getting another thrift to treasure. All right, well, you guys have yourself a great week. I will be going live tonight, um, Monday over on Facebook. Um, if you don't already know, I do go live every Monday and Wednesday over there. And uh, I'm hoping that you guys join me. Um, it's a lot of fun. We do a project typically and chat and uh, it's just a great time. So I hope uh, to see you guys over on the flip side. All right, have a great week and we'll see you on Friday. Bye.